Hi, thanks for joining us today. My name is Matt Jacobs, and I'm the Chief Strategy Officer for Penguin Computing. Today, we're going to discuss digital transformation for HPC and AI. We'll touch a variety of different topics today. Uh, first, we'll delve into the prevailing market trends for HPC and AI. We'll talk about addressing those challenges. Um, we'll delve into workload optimized architectures and the importance they play uh, in the current market trends. We'll talk about the technology practices that we're announcing here this week at Supercomputing and the different usage models under which those can be consumed. The market trends in HPC and AI are varied, but the ones that are impacting us most today are the following. Hardware abstraction uh, is very interesting. We've gone through uh, a little over a decade of virtualization uh, of the platforms. And we've also gone through a little over a decade of centralizing HPC and AI resources. As a result of the centralization and virtualization, users are typically a little less platform sensitive. So it means that it's incumbent upon us as providers in the market to provide targeted solutions that get a little bit closer to the application layer and that we provide emerging technologies that will allow uh, the workflows that these customers are accustomed to. In addition, we're also seeing an increase in platform complexity. And we're seeing this increase being driven by two primary factors. Uh, the first one is the waning of Moore's law. And here uh, we're seeing an industry answer to this waning of Moore's law uh, is specialization. And we're seeing specialization at the compute layer and at the processing layer. But we're also seeing interesting adaptions in the storage layer with the uh, commoditization of flash um, and the advent of new in-memory technologies that we'll discuss. We're also seeing uh, a shift from cloud 1.0 to cloud 2.0. And this shift has brought about an interesting um, set of circumstances. The first of which is we're finding a much more educated customer base um, who understands not only the cost of cloud, but also which cloud providers do which things well and where they should target their workloads. Um, the other thing that we're seeing is, is, is another set of trends. Um, some of them are focused at workload targeting and some of them are focused at cost, but we're seeing uh, this educated customer pursue more of a, a repatriation uh, concept. In other words, bringing some of those workloads home. And they're starting to view their overall compute infrastructure between on-premises, hybrid, and multi-cloud as a continuum. And this compute continuum requires specific tools to be able to leverage it properly in concise and easy to use workflows. And we'll talk about that in more detail. Lastly, flexible usage models. Um, we're seeing uh, repatriation can be difficult, um, especially if a customer has been in the cloud for a long time. Um, having the skill sets and the personnel and even the facilities in some cases to execute on repatriation can be difficult. But primarily we're seeing three use models, on-premises, um, traditional on-premises or as a service and cloud. And we'll talk a little bit about, a more about those as well. So how are we addressing these market challenges? Um, Penguin Computing here at Supercomputing 20 is launching a, a series of technology practices under which we have a series of reference architectures. The idea here is that we want to make these emerging and advanced technologies more accessible. And we want to shorten the time to adoption uh, for our customers. We want to package these technologies in a way that they're comfortable to consume, uh, they're easy to support, and also uh, deliver the most promising performance. We have four primary uh, practices uh, that we're launching here this week. The first of which is our HPC technology practice. The second is our AI and analytics technology practice. The third is our data technology practice. And the fourth is our cloud technology practice. So let's delve into those a little bit more. <clears throat> Each of these practices has, as I mentioned, a series of reference architectures in them. These reference architectures are taking the best technologies from hardware, uh, and software-defined technologies and putting them together in a way that is predefined, tested, understood, and supportable for our customers. Each of these reference architectures are meant to be combinable within the practices themselves and combinable across practices to deliver uh, the best performance and digital transformation for our customers in HPC and AI. They're all meant to be sewn together with our software layers of application, platform, and infrastructure. 
and then also augmented by our services around design and architecture, professional services, managed services, and hosting capabilities. Lastly, any of these can be delivered under a variety of different formats, be that on premises as a traditional deployment, in our public cloud with Penguin Computing on Demand, in a hybrid or multi-cloud scenario with Penguin and other partners that our customers may have, and on-premises as a service. Let's talk about our HPC technologies practice for a moment. Um, our HPC uh, technology practice is uh, designed around infusing modern technologies uh, and workflows into traditional HPC architectures. Our true HPC platform is meant to facilitate the adoption of HPC in traditional enterprise. This is a ready to run HPC platform uh, that is built on our um, traditional architecture, pra architecture practices, but also uh, leverages our skilled clusterware um, cluster management platform to facilitate uh, the use and administration of an HPC environment. Next, we have our Insight HPC platform. Insight HPC is delivering on the advents of AI and how it can impact HPC. Um, this Insight HPC reference architecture includes a traditional batch environment for HPC as well as a traditional data analytics AI environment. Each of these environments can be addressed individually for specific workloads, or they can also be addressed in a pipeline where AI and data analytics is used to provide insight to the questions and the, that we posit to our traditional batch environments. This serves to accelerate uh, the function of the batch environment, increases accuracy as well. Access HPC uh, is, is a reference architecture that is designed to deliver the convenience of a public cloud as a private cloud on our customer's premises. Here, we're infusing a traditional HPC environment uh, with a cloud layer that provides uh, the flexibility of workflows with containerization and virtualization. Our AI and analytics technology practice addresses the three primary use models for AI in the market today. Our origin AI reference architecture delivers powerful analytics at the core. Here we wanna think about large scale development, training and inference platforms in the data center. Our AI horizon AI reference architecture delivers flexible analytics at the edge. These are specialized platforms that deliver the same performance uh, of inference uh, and analytics at the edge, but they're specifically designed for the unique environmental challenges um, that we are presented at the edge. And then Expanse AI. Expanse AI is a platform that integrates our core and edge environments uh, to facilitate continuous learning with the data that we retrieve from inference at the edge being imported back into our data center environment so that it can be used to retrain neural networks and redeploy for further inference. The idea here is that we want to provide our customers with the capabilities around AI uh, that they may not have today in a tightly packaged function. Our data technology practice is designed to deliver the power of software-defined architectures for our customers. Um, these uh, platforms and reference architectures are designed to be addressed individually uh, for spot solutions in our customer environments, as well as uh, to be combined in modern tiering architectures that allow the most efficient and performant use of each of these technologies at every tier. Our live data reference architecture enables our customers uh, with a predefined platform the ability to leverage persistent and DRAM for big memory uh, applications that are latency sensitive and need the high throughput that only memory can provide. Our active data platform gives our customers uh, a bundled uh, software defined architecture that allows them to build out a scalable, highly performant flash tier in their storage architecture. And then our deep data reference architecture is built to give our customers uh, the resilience and scalability of a capacity platform that can be grown as their needs increase. And then lastly, our data nexus reference architecture gives our customers the ability to operate on data where it resides. And in this case, um, they would have to care a little bit less about where the data sits um, to federate that with the compute infrastructure 
and spend more time acting on that data and analyzing that data and less time moving it from its site of origin to where it needs to be computed. Lastly, our cloud technology practice uh, is designed with three reference architectures that deliver the power of modern cloud native technologies to enhance the utility of all of our platforms. CloudBase uh, is a reference architecture that gives our customers uh, pre-packaged workload portability with both containers and virtualization. OmniCloud is our multi-cloud platform that allows customers to unify uh, their on-premises, hybrid, and multi-cloud environments into a singular workflow to achieve the compute continuum we discussed earlier. And lastly, our CloudFlow reference architecture gives our customers the ability to uh, energize its global workforce with remote visualization and uh, the ability to uh, move data around freely. And finally, we land on the power of choice. As we mentioned earlier, consumption models are important. Um, we have been uh, providing traditional on-premises uh, compute environments for a long time for our customers. We have been running our public cloud, Penguin Computing On Demand, for well over a decade. Um, our customers have uh, begun to leverage our capabilities in the hosting market uh, for us extremely dense, uh, power dense uh, environments that you know, may not necessarily be hosted well on, on our own customers' uh, data centers. Um, and then lastly, we have uh, Penguin Computing On-Premises as a service. And this platform allows our customers to extend the um, financial benefits of an operational experience uh, in the cloud, but to their on-premises environment. And this is an environment that Penguin would own and operate for our customers, staff for them, um, and give them the ability to uh, adopt new technologies um, without necessarily staffing for those internally. These are all connected by our uh, internal managed services and services capabilities and our software stack that allows these different models to be combined for an optimal IT infrastructure for our customers' workloads and workflows. Thank you again for joining me today. I hope that you found the information informative. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, please uh, address us at one of the links here uh, we've provided. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you again and hope you have a wonderful supercomputing this year. Thank you.